Well, hey guys, it's DR Drake 63 here today. We're going to take a look at what a lot of people say is an overlooked, often overlooked, and depending on who you talk to, overrated firearm, and that's the Ruger Mini 14. This one is chambered in 223. This particular is vintage 1995. Uh, it is able to handle 5.56. Let there be no controversy about that. Ruger will tell you that. Um, beautiful firearm, wooden steel. These things get uh, compared most of the time unfavorably to the AR platform. And I think it's easy to understand why. You have, uh, you have a firearm which... Uh, shoots the same caliber, is a semi-automatic gas-operated system with various size magazine capacity. And I think when I say unfairly compared to the AR, um, it's a good little gun. But it doesn't have 8 million guys out there competing to make it better. It's manufactured by one company, Ruger. Um, it doesn't have a kajillion aftermarket accessories. It's pretty limited in that way. But um, I've been looking for one of these. I've been looking for one of these in stainless with a wood stock. As you can see, I found it. And uh, today we're going to talk about this a little bit. We're going to shoot it. You know, I've been told if you if you believe what you've been told, I'll, I'll miss paper at 25 yards, and I've heard other people say that they can get, uh, you know, with modifications, one MOA. I don't expect this to be as accurate as an AR. So it's sitting here next to one of my favorite AR builds, and uh, what I did was trade uh, one of my AR builds for this. If you want to get one of these new right now, uh, you go to a big box store, it's going to cost you 900 bucks. This one I got used, like I said, it was a trade. Um, I do not expect with this kind of barrel configuration, I do not expect this firearm to be one MOA shooter. What I expect it to do is be fun to shoot. I expect it's going to do its job. I've heard some people say it's more reliable than an AR. I don't know, this one right here has got a couple thousand rounds through it now at this point, and I haven't had any malfunctions of any kind, so that's kind of a high standard to hold it to. Um, and this AR, even though it's got the, the fixed front sight and the non-floated barrel, um, I'm able to shoot around a one-inch group consistently, even when it heats up at 100 with an optic. This doesn't have an optic. Okay. This has a round sight in the rear and you're lining up with this guy in the front so there's not a lot in the ways of optic not a lot at all pretty simple stuff you can see you can adjust this for windage and elevation got some little spring-loaded detents where you can turn that okay the front sight is fixed whereas on this AR here my front sight can be adjusted for elevation. And the rear sight, uh, well, this is just a, a flip up. You don't really need a rear sight backup when you're using an ACOG because it's, it's getting its uh, non-battery source from the sun or from tritium. But um, so to compare just these two, one with an optic and one without, would, would kind of be silly from the get-go. My expectation, I'm going to shoot this at 50 yards today to start. And my expectation on this is that it's going to uh, uh, maybe shoot somewhere around, with my eyes, open sights off a bench, it's going to shoot probably somewhere uh, around a two inch group at 50. If we can get it inside of that, I'll be impressed. I can definitely see how this, this barrel heating up and not being floated, and it connects back through here with the with the gas system and all that kind of stuff we'll show you a little bit later uh, I can definitely see how when this guy heats up it's gonna lose its accuracy 
this is a heavier burial, barrel profile, things of that nature. <coughs> so, just in terms of what does this feel like in hand, it, it's very compact, which I like. Uh, if I'm looking for something that's just going to be a real quick point and shoot kind of scenario, something that's like a uh, uh, shooting after a varmint, taking a coyote, 100 yards, 150 yards, something like that. This is real quick to grab out of the back seat of the truck and get going with. Um, more so, I'd say, than the AR. You know, this is about six and a half pounds, so it's not a very heavy firearm at all. Um, you know, as, as far as your your action, there you go. It's been best described as uh, it looks like an M14 and the uh, the bolt works like uh, an M1 Garand. And like I said, we'll, uh, we'll get into that. But basically, um, the other thing too is the magazines are proprietary to Ruger. So you want a new one of these? Uh, I'm going to pick a couple up on the way to the range. I happen to, to live near the Sportsman's Guide. I'm going to pick a couple of these up for about 39 bucks a piece for 20 rounders. Um, I've seen some straight run ones out there too, which I think aesthetically would look cool. But how you put these in, there's a hole in the front. For you AK guys, it's like rocking it in. Put that in and pop it back and it's in. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, other workings you have right here, this is a bolt release. So if I pull back on the bolt, there you go. So when I want to lock the bolt back, I pull it back, I press this button, and she locks up. So fairly simple. But this is a nice looking example. It's stainless, like I said, which is what I was looking for. It's got the wood stock and from what I can see, no, uh, no major dings or blemishes. Probably about the only thing I don't like is this butt plate is plastic. Not a super big fan of that. Now I'm not saying I want a rubber one because I don't like rubber butt plates, but uh, um, you know, in my world with some of the older firearms I'd have, I'd love to have this in metal. But uh, overall, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'm looking forward to firing this, seeing what kind of accuracy I can get. Um, and uh, we're gonna fire 55 grain, 5.56. Five, and uh, might pick up uh, some target grade 223 as well, we'll see. But uh, just overall, uh, a nice little build. It's cool, it's got that M14 look to it. And um, um, you know, from a standpoint of, you know, did I trade uh, heads up what was the value proposition? I traded a very accurate AR that I put together so I know it was headspace properly and all that stuff for this. And I don't expect it's going to shoot as well as the AR in terms of accuracy. But I know that going in. So I'm not going to be a guy that needs to spend a bunch more money accurizing this thing. This is not a target rifle. This is something to have fun with. This is something to go shoot, you know, beer cans at 100 yards. This is something to go, uh, if, like I said, coyote hunting, something like that. It's quick. It's handy. We all know what the 5.56 five, slash 223 round can do. So let's see what it can do. I talked about magazines, and all the research I've done has indicated that you want factory Ruger mags. Otherwise, you're asking for trouble. So apparently these guys are kind of picky, and uh, these mags aren't cheap. Um, I picked these up uh, with my discount at uh, Sportsman's Guide for 35 bucks a piece. Now, obviously that's pretty high for a steel mag. Um, these are 20 rounders. I don't, uh, I'm not really interested in sticking the 30 rounders in this particular firearm, but uh, that's definitely not cheap. Two mags for 70 bucks, and that's, that's the going rate or more. So that is one thing, is you cannot use, you know, your P mags or whatever, uh, 223, 556 five, mags from your AR. So uh, be prepared if you're going to get this firearm. So I haven't been excited about first shots with something like this for a while. Uh, I've never shot one of these, so I had no idea what I could expect in terms of recoil anything of that nature. So so this was uh, all brand new. You can see the first shot little muzzle blast tipped the camera. That won't keep happening. But uh, we're setting up here at 50 yards. Um, and as 
I've stated before, whenever I'm not sighting in a scope or something like that, I just refuse to shoot off of sandbags. Also, uh, I have heard that these particular firearms can be a little bit tricky in terms of uh, accuracy and function to, if you don't hold them right. In other words, if you were to hold on to the magazine, which is never a good practice, um, on a firearm like this is a good chance it's going to affect how things are going. But here's, here's the first five shots you see right here, uh, and this is at 50 yards, and uh, that's a pretty good group just for something that's not supposed to be accurate. It's... Looks like the rifle's as accurate as, as I can be. So we continued to uh, to do some additional shooting and uh, are finding, again, like I said, the, you don't have a situation where there's, you know, recoil to speak of. You, you, one thing I'm used to with the 223 round coming out of an AR platform is hearing that buffer spring uh, go back past my ear when I'm firing. You don't have that. And uh, this right here does not have a uh, muzzle device of any type, no flash hide or anything like that. So uh, I'm seeing a pretty good flash every time I shoot this rifle. A little bit of slow motion there, and you can see how the action works. And then uh, we're going to get up and stand up and take some shots with this and want to check it out in terms of double taps. Want to see how it functions uh, shooting... Uh, more of a rapid fire succession because I'm used to having ARs and AKs handle this no problem. Just wanted to make sure that uh, it wouldn't be a problem with this firearm and it, it certainly isn't. Great job. Now this is at 100 yards. This is my first three shots with a warmish rifle and uh, this is coming back with another group, uh, also a three shot group. Very impressed. Let's talk about a few more things about this particular firearm and then we're going to go ahead and take it down. Um, here you see a TAPCO 30 round magazine that is made for the Ruger Mini. Um, they also are known as Crapco. I don't want to get too involved in this. I've never had good experience with this stuff, so I'm not going to use it. I am going to exclusively use the Sturm Ruger magazines from the factory and as I talked about they're not cheap but you know what I don't care I want stuff that's going to work so uh, a good solid metal the followers right the construction's right they don't chimp they don't scrimp uh, it's everything the way it's supposed to be okay now a couple other things about this firearm I don't know if you can see right here this is your safety okay so um, if I hit the bolt hold open mechanism the safety uh, engages here and you move it forward and you can fire the fire the gun okay so that's one thing that's your safety now um, it's cocked I'm gonna go ahead and release this and I'm interested in seeing what kind of pull I get in terms of the trigger I got four and a half pounds Try that again. Again, four and a half pounds. It breaks pretty smooth. Um, you know, it's about what you'd expect for a, well, I'll call a, a military style thing. I mean, heck, a um, mil spec trigger on an AR can be anywhere between four and six pounds. I've even seen them higher. Let's take this guy down. First thing we want to do, we want to hold the bolt open. And I'm just going to get a mat here to set this down on. Right here, you see this hole in the, in the trigger guard. And basically what we're doing is we want to, we want to pry this. So that comes out and your whole trigger group comes out just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Now it's a matter of just lifting the stock right off of the rest of the action. And there you go. And you can see, if you wonder what these screws are on either side, they hold your, your heat shield. And it's also inletted here with metal pieces. 
that fit against. So here you go. This is your receiver. This is your action spring. Here is your gas tube. So that's short stroke. So basically, this is coming up off of your barrel and then meeting right into your activating rod. And you can kind of see here where you've got some buildup there. We're going to clean that off while we got this open. A little bit of break free, my favorite stuff, and you can see that comes right off. But now, um, as you can see, you've got some carbon buildup right here. This is your gas block. What I've been told is you don't want to take these screws off and take this piece off unless you're prepared to put it back on with the proper torque. Now, I don't have anything that points to a gas issue, so I'm not going to do that. If you want to get an idea of what we're looking at here, there you go. I've released the bolt. You see this nice long action spring. Inside here is your rod. Short stroke again, piston, pushing this back, chambering you around. You can see the bolt, how like an M1, it cams off of this lever right here. You pull it back, it twists, and out she comes. So we're going to take that bolt off. We're going to give all this a good cleaning. So let's look at a few more things here. You see this top cover. This is just held on by a, a spring-loaded clip. So basically, with the, the bolt still pulled, pulled back, you just kind of push this to the side, and you can see right here, this just clamps right around the barrel. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is pull back on this spring until it comes out. Just like that. It, this end right here mates into this little port right there, so it's easy enough. Kind of work this and then the, uh, the, the operating rod comes off. Okay, so what you're left with is you got your bolt. Your bolt comes out just like that. So if you notice this tab right here and you see this slot right here, that's how you're going to get that guy back in there is by using. So now we've got this completely taken down. It's just a barrel. You see your gas tube right here, and uh, we'll wipe this all down with, uh, with brake free. Everything, everything here looks good. Now I do want to mention at the range today, um, um, I shot uh, in the neighborhood of 140 to 150 uh, rounds. A um, little mixture of 223, shot some, some uh, match grade hollow point boat tail that was 68 grain shot a lot of 55 grain this is a one in seven barrel so it's going to handle all of that just fine um, i did have one failure to eject not failure to feed failure to eject where it didn't come all the way out and that was somewhere around round 90 so all the way up to that point, and then every round after that, the rifle functioned perfectly. So leads me to believe that we've got an issue where there was maybe in the manufacturing process of the ammo, not enough powder put in that one round, because typically when you have feeding issues, ejection issues, it happens and it happens again and again and again, and more so when the firearm heats up, but uh, that wasn't the case. So glad to, uh, glad to see that. Otherwise, flawless function. And, um, you know, I've had that before with, uh, with an AR or two where everything worked perfect except for that one round that happened one time. And uh, it's hard to fault the firearm for that. We're just giving this a real nice wipe down. You know, if, if I guess if I really wanted to go uh, Smith & Wesson uh, revolver on this, I could get the flits out and polish this up and all that. But this is, uh, this is the barrel it's covered more interested in just protecting it and getting it clean than anything else. 
So here's your bolt. And as you can see here on this uh, operating rod, uh, it just cams in this channel. That's what rotates it. Okay. And uh, kind of an interesting looking affair. You have your extractor claw right here. And that's, that's held tight by this spring right here. Okay, it's kind of like a detent going on right there. Here's your, uh, here's your firing pin. It is not spring-loaded. So I guess you could slam fire this thing if uh, you didn't keep this clean. Looks easy enough to do. I like, uh, I like the stainless parts here, guys, without a doubt. I mean, this is, this is the way to go. You don't have to worry about rust and stuff. Uh, but you do want to keep it clean. You can see some of the areas where you'll get uh, some deposits of carbon. This is right where it runs into the gas tube. So, of course, you're going to get some carbon in there. I want to be careful not to uh, get all, in, all crazy about lubricating your gas tube. That's never a good idea. It will multiply dramatically how quick things build up. Um, one of the areas where where I did see a lot of buildup, looking at this uh, at this receiver right here, this channel right on top, I cleaned a lot of gunk out of the back here, so I could see that if it built up enough, limiting how far your rod might want to travel. So, good idea to get these things clean, and when you take them down, clean them real well. It's interesting this is investment casting um, and then it's hardened so where you have like on your your m1 grands on your m14s uh, this would have been uh, milled out of a block of steel and then hardened um, this is cast ruger is uh, got a proprietary method they use for this they they do a lot of their firearms this way uh, they're good at it and uh, I've not heard of like failures or anything of these parts from Ruger. Um, but like I said, um, very interesting. This is a, a 186 series gun, by the way. And uh, you can tell that by the serial number. So we're just going to continue to uh, clean and lube these parts before we reassemble. I'll put that back together. Lubed up. Don't worry, guys. It's an empty magazine. Bold holds open on the last one. So, one of the the things that I think is a, a big misnomer about this particular firearm is that it's inaccurate. You basically see videos uh, on the internet when it comes to this particular firearm, the Mini 14, that run in um, three or four different categories. One category is the Mini 14, why doesn't anybody know about this? Why doesn't this rifle get more respect? Things of that nature. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about the good things about it, which so far from what I've seen, there are plenty. There's also the Ruger Mini 14 versus the AR, which, like I said earlier, begs to, I guess, be compared because they both are, are uh, in today's world, they're carbine length rifles uh, that shoot the 556223 round. I get that, okay? Uh, the other one is, is why aren't these accurate? Why aren't they more accurate? And I want to talk about that one for a second. I'll see, uh, I'll see uh, lots of comments, both in various forums and threads, as well as in videos where guys talk about not being able to get better than, say, a six inch group at 100 yards, maybe a four inch group. And then it becomes pretty clear that these guys have never really spent a lot of time shooting irons to begin with. In other words, when they shoot their other firearms, they're using some kind of a magnified dot optic or red dot. Well, if really the only iron sight shooting you've done in any amount of time is to take this Mini 14 out and shoot at iron sights, guess what? You're not going to get the best results. Uh, especially if you're, you're freehand, something like that. Now, I'm not a guy that wants to sit down with sandbags and take this rifle and and uh, put myself in a situation where it's at rest. Uh, this is a, a little carbine, pick it up, shoot it, standing freehand, sitting freehand, prone, whatever you're doing. I shoot irons all the time. It's my preferred way to shoot whenever I can. Uh, it's clear to me a lot of guys today don't. So if you're going to sit down and you're going to talk about this being an inaccurate rifle, let's first talk about your skill as an iron sight shooter. Otherwise, your comparisons are kind of nil.
points, but I was able to consistently get this anywhere between a two and a two and a half inch group at 100 yards. So think about that. That means that I'm hitting at 300 yards, I'm able to hit a six inch circle consistently. And that's gonna be any coyote, any varmint, anything you wanna take with, uh, with the 5.56 five, round. So I just wanted to kind of throw that in real quick because I think that, uh, I think this rifle gets a bad rap about not being as accurate as an AR, but guys, guys that aren't iron sign shooters are the ones that are taking those shots and they don't wanna admit that part of the issue is them. Anyway, this is a neat little gun. And I say it's a little gun, it's compact. I think it's, it's kind of unfair that this is called the Mini 14 because it makes it sound like it's a toy or a, a BB gun or something, and nah, it's not. It packs the full punch of, uh, of 5.56-223. But anyway, um, great, great firearm. We're gonna be doing more with this for sure. But uh, uh, like I said, it was something I've been getting my eyes on for a long time. I gladly traded a build that I wasn't going to shoot all that much, mostly just had fun building it. Value's all mine, and uh, this is a fun, fun rifle to shoot. Looking forward to using this to take some coyotes this fall. More to come later on this, but uh, appreciate your time as always. This is DR Drake 63 saying so long, guys.